What's up, guys? Dad Dash here. And I'm coming to you uh, with a uh, video today um, in regards to, um, well, let me explain why I'm doing the video. Number one, as you know, there continues to be a lot of talk about a tier system that's coming in, um, about DoorDash programs, Top Dasher, Diamond program, all these things, right? So, you know, it continues to be a, a debate, although I really don't think it's a debate. I think it's more hype than anything. I think it's more of an excuse for uh, people to make videos because they're like, hey, what do I make videos about? So, you know, let's do a test on Top Dasher and see if it actually works and, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And I can, it'll, it'll bring me video content. So then they'll come out and they'll have their conclusions and some see good things, some see bad things, whatever. But I think overall it's a math problem, right? Top Dasher is a math problem and the math will never be with the Dasher. The Dasher will never beat the math of Top Dasher. It's like, uh, it's like when you play a slot machine at a casino, some guys are gonna walk in and they may win a little bit in the short term, but in the long term, they're gonna eat you alive and you're going to only make you're not going to maximize your win, your 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 earnings, right? So, and that's what we're looking to do out here. At least that's what I'm looking to do out here is maximize my time, maximize the value for my time. So, I hope you are too. And if you are, I'm here to tell you, there's one way and only one way that you're going to make money out here in this world right now, in my opinion. And this is my opinion. This is opinion of one man in a rural area. Uh, in a very saturated market where a lot of people are out here doing the same thing as me and I still am finding a way to make money I'm still finding a way to hit my financial goals that I need to month in month out how do you know that because I'm still here in this car talking to you the moment I'm not you know regardless of what might be said clearly it became it did not become a financial financially viable opportunity for me anymore and I moved on so Anyways, with that said, a little bit of a long intro. What's the purpose of this video today? Well, the purpose of this video today is I just mentioned to you. The way you're going to conquer tiers, the way you're going to conquer any program that any of these apps throw at you, um, and the way you're going to conquer acceptance rate requirements is multi-apping. That is it. Multi-apping and taking a business-like approach. And why is that? Well, the reason why that is is because um, the way to defeat these apps is to make them compete for your business. I've said that from the beginning. I go way back before I got all involved and in looking at programs and things and watching other people's videos, videos I've, I've now realized maybe weren't as credible or as honest as I thought, but hey, whatever. Uh, it was still interesting. It's still interesting to see how people operate and, it, and I'll still continue to watch because to me, it's all information. Information is key to success. But in the end, what everything comes back, what everything proves, what my data proves, what everything comes back to, what my most successful months that I've ever had always come back to when I go back and review the data, review what I was doing, review the approach I was taking that month, it comes back to multi app And why is that? Why is that the most successful? Well, it's because you're making the apps compete for your business. It's because your goal is to take the most value from each app and take them at their and accept business from them at their most valuable points. And then you combine that value together and then you win your day and you reach your financial goal. And you do it hopefully quicker than you would do it if you were just focusing on one app. And you will in the long run. You will definitely reach your financial goals faster and quicker, which is the goal we all have out here, which is essentially another way of saying maximizing the value of your time. But you will do that um, and you know, you might have a day where you can say, hey, I made $500 on one app today yeah, because you had some sort of a, of a promo going on or whatever, you know, there's always going to be times in the short run, but we're not looking at a short run. You know, it's, I remember when I started out in, in, in my previous industry that I, that I used to be in, I remember, uh, being told by an old head that said, Hey, listen, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Remember that. Uh, you can come out and win at this. You can come out and be the number, you know, exceed your exceed results and everything. But, but it, it doesn't count for nothing 
if you just do it in the short term. If you if you go out and you sacrifice your long term to reach something in the short term, especially when you're doing it in a career or you're doing it in a longer term uh, avenue in life, or you're doing it in a situation where you need to, you know, where your earnings are always going to be whenever whatever you're doing to earn is always going to be a long term, whether that's a week, a month, a year. But you've got to always be looking towards the long term. So in the long term, where do you end up? Well, in the long term, if you just work one app, I don't believe you will ever be better off in the long term working just one app, relying on a program. Because the thing is, you can't be. Because it's impossible that that app's financial uh, goals are aligned with yours. They're just not. So therefore, if you look towards that app, a platform, a technology platform, whose simple goal was to volumize you and make you work as much as you can at as cheap a cost as possible. That is not ever going to align with you maximizing your value. It just doesn't. So anyways, I wanted to, I thought to myself, all right, let's talk about multi-apping. Let's talk about, let's, you know, I haven't talked about it in a long time. I talk about a lot of, about DoorDash, but there's a lot of what I do, which is all designed on my approach. And the only approach I believe is the viable approach. And that is working multiple apps. Now, when I say that, there's several people who do, who do it differently. But in my opinion, from my experience, you know, as a business, I have to approach that from several principles that I took with me from where I was at previously. And that is number one, it's an obligation to do anything you do ethically, uh, anything you do ethically. Uh, so you have to ethically multi, multi app. And what does an ethical multi app look like? What does that look like? Well, first of all, read your TOS, figure out what's allowed, right? And then work within those terms. Knowing that these are all just technology platforms, knowing that I'm an independent contractor and knowing that until I hit accept, I don't work for anyone. I know they can't restrict me from looking at seven, eight, 10, nine, 12, 13, 14 apps at a time. Now, I don't want to do that unsafely. So that is part of the ethical standpoint. I don't want to do it in a way that is going to put me at harm when I'm out on the road. I don't want to do it in a way that's going to put other people at harm. And I don't want to do it uh, in a way that um, is going to create a situation where I can't um, fulfill my agreed upon obligation that I have agreed that I'm going to fulfill. I don't want to do that or do anything that would jeopardize uh, me being in a position to make sure that I can fulfill the contracts that I accept. So how do you do it? Well, first of all, you look at multi-apping from the standpoint of it's opportunities to work. That's the multi-app approach the ethical multi-app approach. Now, yes, can you throw and accept three, four, five orders at a time in your car and say, okay, I've just accepted five orders and queued them up and I've got $50 in the car right now and I'm gonna go around and try to work them all and and, and pick up all these orders and go deliver them all and try to meet all the, all the time guidelines. Yes, you can do that at your own peril. But you're leaning in to a risky situation and you're leaning in to a time trend that is not going to turn out in your favor because eventually you're going to get popped eventually you're going to run late eventually you're going to hit the train <laughs> that always happens to me or happened to me when i used to try it you're going to have something happen that slows you down and when you do all of it's going to tumble crumble and fall and the problem is is because you've hit accept on all of those orders you are now violating your TOS by working, uh, by, by not getting these orders delivered within the time frame. It's not a violation of your TOS to be working multiple orders because they don't restrict you from doing that if you read them closely. What they do restrict though is as they say, you are to meet the time guidelines. You are to stay on task. You are to do, thing, you are to make sure that this, that, that you reach the customer at the agreed upon time at the very beginning. If you take on too much, you're not gonna do that. So an ethical multi-app says no stacks in your car. No multi-app stacks unless it's absolutely perfect. Unless it's a 
back the back stack, which is what I would say, where you know you've got, again, Spark is wonderful for that because a lot of times you get, if you take a Walmart Spark, you don't have to be there till quarter of, and it's, you might accept that it, at, you know, 20 after, you've got 25 minutes to go out and take a DoorDash, take a Uber, take a small little Instacart grocery run if you've got one around the Walmart that you're gonna be going to. As long as it's taking you in the direction and you can reach that location for pickup at quarter of, um, you're good. Those are multi-app stacks that you can do and that you can spin together and that you can maximize your earnings with. However, popping off three restaurant pickups, throwing them all in your car, and then essentially, uh, and maybe going three different directions and having to choose that this, this customer for no other reason than it's the one that, it's the app that you have the most money in, or maybe it's just the direction you chose to go. This customer goes first, and this other customer's food sits in your car and gets cold and goes last. That's not fair, that's not ethical, that's not the way to do multi-apping, and that's not how you should win this fight if you're out here trying to make money. You've got to win the multi-app fight by doing it right, and doing it right is turning on and having as many screens as you can afford to have for your business and that you can safely have. Having things like driver utility helper active in the background that can essentially eliminate some of the lower tier orders so you never have to see them come to your screen and they're already working. Maximo can do the same thing, pull them out, whatever that guideline is that you don't want to see. While at the same time, you can have your shopping apps up so that you can be at a glance looking and seeing what's going on so that you can pull over, sit in the parking lot and very quickly be looking and assessing and looking and assessing. Order comes over here, order comes over here. Now you're not looking to do them both. You're looking to do the most valuable. And you look and you say, okay, this order over here is my most valuable, except decline, turn off all the apps. That's the key, turn off all of those apps. Don't get tempted and don't let the apps, because the apps will, I do believe the apps look at your screen because there's been too many times that I will start getting orders going in the direction, trying to tempt me to add that order to my queue. And I've done it sometimes. I'm not gonna tell you I haven't, I have. <clears throat> sometimes it works really well. And sometimes it's at my own peril. And sometimes it's caused me great problems. And I've been the recipient of contract violations because of it. But bottom line is, that's why you wanna turn the app off as soon as you accept you hit that accept button on that order. That's what you've got to do. You do that, you're ethically multi-apping. You do that, it's no stressful than working one app. All you're doing is just looking at multiple screens. And if you're in a slower market like me, then a lot of times it's not that big of a deal. Because a lot of times I'm sitting there looking at screens that are just saying finding an order, 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 finding an order. And guess what? Suddenly, like magic, one of the screens wakes up and says, here you go. And I look at it and I say, is it valuable? Nope. Move on. Eventually, an order of value will come through and I will go ahead and take it. Like I said, there is occasions when I'll get multiple orders that I have to assess, that I have to um, look at, that I have to consider, and I'll assess them and determine, hey, it doesn't meet my value standard, doesn't meet my value guidance. Am I willing to do this offer right now as it stands? Uh, and sometimes I am and sometimes I'm not. But anyways, that's, how you multi app and it's very key that if you're going to do this in the long term that you get comfortable doing it and that's why I have a Z fold that's why I have a Z flip that's why I have a S23 Ultra 
That's why I have three phones that I'm working on. I have an S22 Ultra as well. And I use as many screens as I can. I have a command center set up. Each one is programmed to look exactly the same as the other. That way, when I pick up this phone, I can go right in and I can run any apps I want to on that phone. They have all the same apps, all the same folders, all the same everything. But it's key that I see as many opportunities as I possibly can so that I'm always considering the best use of my time. And if you are doing that, then you will never have to rely on a tier program. You will never have to rely on a Top Dasher program. You will never have to rely on a reward program from any of these apps. You just won't. You've got to have enough apps signed up, ready to go, ready to feed you orders when you're ready to work. And if you do that, and if you're prepared, if you have the apps ready to go, you can win the fight. But if you don't have the apps ready to go, if you don't have multiple opportunities, if you're beholden to one particular app, then you will always, without fail, find yourself having to consider whether or not those programs are something you need to use. You will find yourself sitting there for hours at a time, waiting on orders while the app figures out, okay, we're gonna break you. We're gonna break you down. We're gonna make you take an order. We're gonna make you take whatever it is. We're gonna tell you, we're gonna make you feel like it's slow. We're gonna make you feel like you need to raise your acceptance rate. And we're gonna have you so mentally confused by the end of what they're doing with you, you will do exactly what we say, exactly when we do it, exactly when we need you to do it. And it won't matter that you don't have to because you will just do it. The only way to combat that and the apps know it, and the apps hate it, and the apps can't do anything about it. The only way to combat against this is by using and having multiple apps that you can use at any given moment. And when one isn't working, you pull out the other one. And when another one's not working, you pull out another one. And when another one's not working, you pull out another one. And if all of them aren't working, well, it's probably not a good time for you to be working. Time to go home. Anyways, guys, I hope this makes sense. I wanted to, uh, it's not really like a complete, you know, it's not really a, a complete breakdown, but I wanted to just discuss multi-apping because I don't hear it discussed anymore enough. I hear it looked at, it's not looked at anymore uh, as a viable option. Um, it seems that things have really gone, gone to the degree that where everybody feels like You've got to just give in to these apps at this point that somehow uh, math isn't around anymore. That math doesn't make sense. That the long run doesn't make sense. And listen, I understand. For a lot of the average dashers out here, math doesn't isn't a thing that you guys are going to be worried about. It's not something you're probably comfortable with. It's not something you're going to apply. It's something that you go, wait a minute, I'm not doing this for math. Well, you should be. You're in business. And I can tell you right now, there is no reason why statistical patterns don't have basis doing this. Because I'm here to tell you, that is exactly what DoorDash is using in their algorithms. That is exactly what DoorDash is using to build their AI. That is exactly how DoorDash is drawing conclusions. The thing is though, they're taking, they have access to all of that data they're, they're, they have a computer system that's reading all of the data, that's making millions of data calculations every single second. And then it's helping DoorDash to figure out what the best thing to do is and the best way to motivate its dashers, motivate its drivers to do what it wants them to do and to get as many orders delivered at as cheap a rate as possible. So if you don't, Start thinking of things from a mathematical standpoint and apply the programs there, you know, and, and start looking at a mathematical approach when you're looking at these programs, you will get exploited and you will get exploited bad because I can assure you they've done the math. 
And they, in every calculation, everything they've done has been looked at by people far smarter than myself, far smarter than probably any dasher out there in the field who have access to computers and calculations and everything. And they said, give us the long run on this. What's the probability that this works in our favor? And they've made doggone certain that that thing that they're doing, that program that they're doing is going to be a winner for DoorDash in the long run and a loser for the workforce in a whole. Now, that doesn't mean that there can't be some winners, but as a whole, it's going to be a big winner for DoorDash. And as a result, that's not a winner for you. And unfortunately, because we don't have access to the data, we don't have access to, uh, you know, an unlimited amount of time and having our app on an unlimited amount of time because we have lives and we have things we've got to do. We have to fight back and we have to do it in a mathematically based way. And we have to look at these programs, ignore these programs and understand that when the data and the math don't make sense, they don't make sense. So in that case, do something that does make sense. And what makes sense is working multiple apps, utilizing multiple apps to help you find and reach your financial bottom line. And we've got going on way too long here. It's over 20 minute video. I have no idea if I will keep this this long. I'll play it back and see if it's worth it. Okay, if I think there's enough value to play the whole thing for you, I will. If there isn't, I'll, cut, I'll make some cuts. But as always guys, I appreciate you listening. Stay safe, stay profitable, and Dad Dash will talk to you soon.